Alright guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel, KKC Productions here. And today I am going to link a network drive using using a, a hard drive through my D-Link. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the web browser real quick. And we're going to go to the D-Link website. So what you can do is you can come here, you can go to support page. And you can search for the type of D-Link router you have. So I have the 868L. Type that in. And now from there, I see here's my router comes up. So I'll click that. And as I wait for that to come up, you can see here it says, My D-Link Share Port. We're going to need this application. So you just download that and you'll get an application. And right here on my bar you can see next to Skype and this Chrome button here there's a little share port button so we gotta make sure we have that alright so now we're gonna open up a second browser and let's go a little slow on here so we can people can type this in I already typed mine in a lot so here it is you gonna type in 192.168.0.1 which usually that's all the D-Link router buttons you can type in to open up your router. I have a password protection on mine, so let's just try this. Usually, if you guys have never typed this in before, usually the password is admin with no password. So that would work. So I got this on here, so it's a little more intuitive to get in, but oh, sometimes it doesn't want to work. All right, so here we are. We are into your router. Make sure you have that set up already so you can get in it. And you can see here, there is a storage button. Let's click on that storage button. So first, what we're going to want to do is make sure you hit enable share port access. You can type that in. You can also use these settings if you'd like. That's up to you. And allow remote access. So if you look down here on the user list, I already made this for my Plex server. You don't have to worry about making that. As long as you see admin and access path, just shows the little arrow button, you'll be all right. And number of devices. I have my Toshiba external hard drive plugged in through the back of my, my router. Some of your routers should have a USB port on it, and you should be able to plug that into it. So I'd recommend plugging that in through a USB 3, which usually most new of new hard drives have that already. So let's plug that in the back of the router. I'll have a link in the little video show you guys how to plug that in. It's not too hard. So once that's set, make sure you save your settings at the bottom and then click Media Server Next. That's at the next next to storage where we just clicked. So first we will enable our DLNA server which accesses if you have a Blu-ray player. Sometimes you'll see a link to your computer that's basically a DLNA server. So I have my server name on it. It's the name of the router, the 868L. I have that enabled. And then you should see a hard drive, the one that's plugged in. So if you click Browse, you should be able to browse through all the stuff you'd like to see here. I want my videos to be on the network so I can use it through my PlayStation. So I was able to click Videos and Select. You guys don't have to do that. You can just click um, click the root button, and that'll just do the whole entire hard drive. But I don't want that, so I just clicked just the video button. And then you can see the next item here. You don't you guys have to use this or not. That's if you guys have iTunes. I selected my music folder on the hard drive. If you want everything else on iTunes, just click the root button, and that'd be fine. And then if you are using a USB 3.0, which I'll show you guys the difference between USB 3 and 2.0, now just enable that so it'll have faster transfer speeds through the router. And that's it. Just make sure you click your save your settings and you'll be set. I don't want to save because I don't want to change my video button there. That's pretty much it. As long as you got those two things set in the storage and media server section, you should be good. So now what I'd like you to do is exit out of that. Make sure you guys have installed the share port in the first part of the video already. So if you click on it, it should look just like this. You can see my hard drive shows up here. 
If it doesn't, click refresh. It should come up or in some sort of form like that, which is good. That's what you guys want to see. So now you can map this network drive. See receiving status comes up. So if you double click on this, it will actually open it up in your, your folders tab. But it will not come up to where you're able to view the actual tab and actually have it as a selectable drive. You'd have to always open up the access port page. So to make this a lot easier, I automatically, since it pulled up the exact location, you can see in the, the bar here on the top, what I would do is right click on this drive here, my Toshiba, the actual folder right under the actual router's link here. And then you'll click, come down to map network drive. So it should come up like a folder like this. You can name it any driver you want. Um, I'll just do A, because I don't have A yet. Click finish. So now, now if you look under my computer list, you see Toshiba External A. That drive is now mapped to where you can always get it. So let's close all this out real quick and reopen a folder. So now you can always see Toshiba External A is now there. So now that that's there, you have successfully mapped your network drive. I seem to have had a problem trying to figure this out in the first place because I did not have the SharePort um, app. So once I was able to do that, I was able to create this link here. Since my router does have a password, the username for it, sometimes it'll ask you to type a username and password. Just type in admin, and then if you have no password, just click enter. Or if you do, enter your password with the username admin and then you should be able to access this. So the main reason I did this is because I have a Plex server and I wanted my hard drive to be plugged in through the whole entire network. So I was able to map this drive onto my computer, the Toshiba External A, and then I was able to actually select the videos folder so I can map it to my Plex server. So that's it. I We have successfully uh, mapped our external hard drive. I hope this video helped everyone, and I hope uh, this can help everyone else trying to map their drive with uh, through the D-Link router. I know it can be sometimes a pain to do, but if you guys get it working successful, put in the, like my video, comment, don't forget to do that, and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys for watching, and hope this video helped you guys out. Have a good day.